it's here. Sort of. Half-Life 2 was released on the 16th of November 2004. Now, just 15 years and 5 days later, classic Valve time, we finally get the first video for Half-Life, Alex. It's not Half-Life 3, but it might as well be. It's a new Half-Life. That's the important thing. Bit of a weird announcement really. I guess I had been waiting for it for so long. So many possible announcement dates and events came and went, so many memes were generated about it, that I never thought the day would come. But then it did, accompanying the release of a new operation for CSGO. Valve didn't even try to generate any hype for it. Just, oh yeah, we'll launch the trailer on X date at X time. A few minutes before the trailer's launch, I panicked as I realised I didn't know where to go to actually see it. There was no live stream, nor anywhere official to hype it up. It just appeared on YouTube, quickly followed by the Steam storefront and on Valve's social media accounts. And there it was, the reveal of what Valve had been working on for god knows how many years. There was a lot to process. Why should you be excited about this? In case you are too young or stupid to remember why Half-Life 2 was such a big deal, Half-Life is Valve's flagship product. They will not tarnish its name on inferior stuff. The Half-Life series has always been cutting edge. Half-Life 1 was the first proper 3D FPS that attempted to be more than just a basic corridor shooter. Half-Life 2 came with physics and character animations that were ahead of anything else by years. The series doesn't just use cutting edge technology, but is also used by Valve to launch cutting edge technologies. They used Half-Life 2 to get people on Steam. As you might know, Steam became kind of a big deal. Similarly, Half-Life 3, Half-Life Alex, is running on Valve's latest Source 2 engine, and it's being used to push VR and the technology certainly needs it. When you look to the future, what do you see? Because if you're not picturing us all wandering about with goggles on in VR worlds, then you're doing it wrong. The only issue is how we get from where we are now to there. It's a chicken or egg problem. VR needs something awesome to attract an audience, but until the audience is there, it scares away the companies that are in the best position to make something awesome. A few decent indie games have come out for it, but I don't think they can be described as must-have. But if I had to name a game that I'd consider to be a must-have title, it would be Half-Life. It just happens to be made by Valve, who are the only company that's rich enough, crazy enough, and good enough to pull off something this ambitious. Or at least they used to be. The truth is, while they've continued to be successful, we haven't heard any real large announcements from them for many years now. At least nothing awesome game-wise. I like to think that's because they've all been busy over there in Valve headquarters doing weird projects with VR scrapping things over and over again until they got it right. And I also like to think that Half-Life Alex was announced because they got it right. I don't think they'd risk using the Half-Life name otherwise, which is why I'm so excited about it. I'm sad to see so many people complaining that it's VR only, but then again, people would be complaining if it was just a normal game as well. We only had to wait six years between the first and second Half-Lives, and even then I remember a review of Half-Life 2 jokingly stating that expectations for it were so high that people wouldn't be happy unless it came on a golden platter, delivered by Jesus himself. I don't think even that would satisfy some of the people I see complaining about it online these days. While Valve will receive criticism whatever they choose to do, at least by going down this route the experience will be incomparable to anything else out there. There's nobody out there who wouldn't want to try it, it's just the barrier of entry that's the problem here. With a VR system costing hundreds of pounds and 900 for the ultimate Valve model, it will put it out of reach of a lot of people, many of whom I'm sure would love a chance to try it. I can't even imagine what Child Philip would think, knowing that a new Half-Life was coming out, but that there wasn't a chance in hell that my parents would get it for me. I think it would destroy me. I'm still waiting to see what plan, if any, Valve come up with to allow more people the chance to experience it. So what's with the name? Why isn't it Half-Life 3? Obviously there are the superficial reasons like because it's a prequel rather than a sequel, and because you'll be controlling Alex rather than Gordon Freeman. Also, story-wise, Half-Life has been left on a silly kind of cliffhanger that everyone was expecting Half-Life 2 Episode 3 to answer, instead of that being the job of a full-on sequel. And the proposed plot was released just the other year by one of Half-Life's writers, so I think carrying on with Half-Life's story is a bit of a minefield. Also, Half-Life and Half-Life 2 had almost completely different gameplay, settings and worlds. Would it feel like Half-Life 3 if it merely picks off from where Half-Life 2's left off? So there are these superficial reasons for why it's not Half-Life 3, but I'm sure the core gameplay would be the same as Half-Life 3's where it released next year instead, so I don't particularly care about those things. The cynical bit of me thinks they've avoided the 3 in case it's a failure. If it is, then at least Valve can be all like, oh well, Half-Life Alex was just an experiment, the real Half-Life 3 is still being developed. And if it all goes well, then maybe one day in 2 or 300 years time, 
Half-Life 4 might be announced, and we'll suddenly know that this was Half-Life 3 all along. And we'll know that Valve still hasn't learned to count to three. Will I get VR for Half-Life Alex? Yes, of course I will. I've been waiting for this moment for over a decade. My body is ready. My computer is ready. And my room is ready. I don't even have a bed. I just have a mattress that I push up against the wall in the day. I personally think that this is the future. Why would you want something that you sleep on to take up valuable potential gaming space? And not only will I have space to walk around, but when a headcrab inevitably jumps out at me, it'll be softer to run into a mattress than into the wall. See, I've thought this all through. If this game is a success, no doubt other companies will jump on the VR gaming bandwagon to cash in on the audience for VR that Valve's efforts will have generated. Similarly to how we're seeing them all jumping on the digital distribution service now that Steam's as big as it is. If Half-Life Alex fails, I still think that VR will eventually get there. It'll just be held back for who knows how many more years. At some point, I am sure they will become more than just a novel accessory for richer and older gamers. The question is, how long will that take? And what will the tipping point be? So now the wait begins. Check out the trailer here, as if you haven't seen it already. And here's my nostalgic review of Half-Life 2, if you want to know what made it so special.